Hello and welcome to the first part of Finding the Golden Nugget, Sustainable Business Modeling. In this video, you will get a better understanding of what is a business model, how to create your own using the business model canvas, and how to apply its various elements. At the end of the second part, we will take a look at an example business model. When we talk about a business model, we talk about a business's strategy on how it intends to create and capture value. In short, it's the plan for the successful operation of a business. A common tool to help entrepreneurs map out their business strategy is the Business Model Canvas by Alex Osterwalder. Whether it is to implement a new startup idea or manage a well-established business, the Business Model Canvas helps identify sources of revenue, the intended customer base, products, and details of financing. As you can see, the Business Model Canvas is structured around nine interconnected building blocks, each describing a vital part of your business model. The first one, Customer Segments, answers the question, who are your customers? The Value Proposition represents your main selling point and why customers should choose you over your competition. The Channels describe how you aim to communicate with your customers, as well as how your products are delivered to them. The Customer Relationships Describe the kind of relationship that you want to establish with your customers. The revenue streams describe how your business intends to make money. The key resources contain your most important assets without which your business model would not work. The key activities include all the actions you need to perform to create and deliver your value proposition. The key partnerships contain all partners that help you realize your business model, since you won't be able to perform all key activities nor have all the key resources yourself. And finally, the cost structure. It includes all the costs that are needed to make your business model work. With that, let's take a look at each of them in greater detail. The first building block is the customer segments. And as we already established, it answers the question who your customers are. It defines for which group of people or organizations you aim to create value. While most businesses target only one customer segment, there are others that cater to the needs of two or even more segments at the same time. It is important to understand though that your customers don't exist to serve you, but rather you exist to serve your customers. The second building block is the value proposition, and it includes the products and services that you offer to your customer segments. It is the reason why customers buy from you. This could be because your product is the newest version, it has a better performance or a brand new design, it is easier to use or offers the same value for a lower price. In creating your value proposition, ask yourself, which customer needs are you satisfying? Which jobs are you helping customers get done? Or what value are you delivering to your customers? The third building block contains your channels and they are your way of communicating with your customers and how you deliver your products to them. Start with asking yourself, how do your customers want to be reached? But also, how are you reaching them right now? In general, you can reach your customers either through directly owned channels, like retail stores or websites that are owned by the company itself, or through indirectly owned channels, such as partner websites or wholesale distributions. In the end, you can use a mix of both, but finding the right channels is crucial in bringing your value proposition to the market. The fourth building block are the customer relationships. They describe the ways you want to get in touch with your customer segments. Broadly speaking, they help you get, keep, and grow your customers. Such relationships can be transactional, long-term, where there is recurring customer interaction, through personal assistance, like through an employee at a store or a call center, but it can also be through co-creation or communities, where you let customers interact and help each other. The fifth building block contains the revenue streams. They answer the question, how do I make money? Now, this constitutes more than simply the price of a product. It also answers the question, how much are your customers willing to pay for your product, but also how are they going to pay for it? You could, for example, simply sell your product for a fixed price. You could offer a subscription fee where customers pay on a reoccurring basis or a usage fee where they pay more the more they use your product. But you could also give your product away for free and then hope that some of your customers will pay for the premium version of it. The fixed building block represents the key resources and they list all the important assets you need to make your business model work. Your resources can come from four different categories. They can be either physical, like office buildings, machines, or vehicles. They can be human, 
so basically all the people that are working for you, but it can also be financial resources or intellectual properties like brands, patents and copyrights. The seventh building block are the key activities. And like your key resources, they contain all the important jobs that need to be done to make your business model work. As they form the basis for your value proposition as well as your revenue streams, your key activities should be directly relatable to them. Because if they're not, then something is going wrong, as the activities you view as most important aren't actually delivering value to your customers. The eighth billing block are the key partnerships. They describe the relationships that you have with your business partners, manufacturers and suppliers. So basically for all those resources and activities that are important to your business model, but that you don't have or do yourself. The ninth and final building block describes the cost structure. Here you want to list all the costs that are necessary to run your business model and make sure that your cost structure is aligned with your value proposition. In general, there are two different cost structures your business model can lean towards. The first one is a cost-driven structure where the focus lies on minimizing cost where possible, which can be seen, for example, in the aviation industry. The second one is a value-driven cost structure where the focus lies more on the value creation itself and less on the costs that are necessary to run the business model. To summarize, the business model canvas helps businesses better understand their customer segments, outline the related value proposition, and list the anticipated costs. I hope you now have a better understanding of how to use the business model canvas to draft your own business idea. In part two of Finding the Golden Nugget Sustainable Business Modeling, we will talk about how to include sustainability into your business model and thus pursue a sustainable value creation. Thank you for your attention.